Hey everybody, and welcome to my first of several videos uh, regarding the limits of transcendental functions. And if you're unaware of what we're referring to when we say a transcendental function, here is a definition from uh, Wolfram Math World, uh, basically saying that uh, uh, something that's transcendental is going to transcend uh, an algebraic function. Now, I've always considered these things all algebraic personally, but uh, that's just me. We're particularly going to be looking at exponential functions, log functions, and trig functions. Those are basically what we're going to be looking at uh, in regards to what an exponent or what a transcendental function is going to be. Now, just like with other functions that you've seen in uh, calculus, the limits of transcendental functions is going to say, well, what does it do first? We're going to be looking at what does it do as we approach an extreme? What's the end behavior going to be as we approach positive or negative infinity? We might be able to look at these and say, well, how does a function behave as we approach a specific value? Uh, well, moving on to the uh, material at hand, the first thing that we see uh, that we're going to be looking at first are exponential functions. So, down here in the uh, text is the equation of a generic exponential function where it's telling you that uh, the a value is going to be a vertical stretch or compression, but more critically, probably a vertical reflection. The b value is the base of the function, and that'll tell you if it is going to be a growth function or a decay function. And the h and the k values, those tells you uh, whether it moves uh, side to side or up and down as a translation. Now here you're provided with the equation of, a, of an exponential function and you're asked to identify what are the uh, limits going to be as you approach negative infinity or positive infinity, uh, which is a pretty, pretty common thing. Now what's provided for you is the graph of the transformed function, which is very useful because it's nice to have a visual re reference for uh, these types of equations or these types of functions to see how is it going to behave uh, as we approach an extreme value. Now, real quick, uh, say for instance that the transformed function wasn't given to you, it's very easy to uh, figure out what that transformed function is, and I'm going to just give you a quick uh, recall. Uh, so, an untransformed exponential equation is just going to be y is equal to b to the x power. And with any three points, I can graph a sketch of that function. And these are the three points. If I go through 0, 1, 1, and whatever the base is, and negative 1 and the reciprocal of the base, we can graph any uh, particular transformed function. So for the one that we have here, b is the 3 over 2. So I would have 0 and 1, 1 and 1 half or 3 over 2, 3 over 2, and negative 1 and the reciprocal would be 2 thirds. So I would go to 0, 1, and that's what I consider to be my most critical point when I'm trying to graph these things. Uh, 1 and uh, 3 over 2, about 1 and a half is here. Negative 1 and 2 thirds will put me about here. And they all have a horizontal asymptote at y is equal to 0. So this particular function is going to have some kind of behavior like this. Now, after I have that you know, basic function down. Let me clean this up a little bit. After I have that basic function down, now I'm going to look at the equation and then say, okay, well, what are the transformations that are occurring here? Well, this x minus 1, that says we're going to move uh, right one space, and the minus 3 says we're going to move down one space. So from that critical point of 0, 1, I'm going to go to the right one space, and down three spaces and find its corresponding point here on the graph. And then I could, uh, you know, find the other corresponding points here and see that it does kind of follow the same trend. So this is what I would do if I did not have the transformed function already graphed for me. Uh, so 
Here, now that we do have the transformed function graphed, we just look to see what are the behaviors going to be. So as I go towards negative infinity this way, you can see that the function is approaching the horizontal asymptote at y is equal to negative 3. And as we go to the right this way, we can see that the function is increasing without bound towards positive infinity. And that's how I would uh, evaluate the graph of a function or evaluate the limits of a function as x approaches uh, an extreme when I don't have a graph. I think having a graph is probably the easiest way of doing it. Now moving on here, uh, the graph is, again has been provided for us. So we're just kind of a, you know seeing well what does it do as it approaches a positive or negative extremes. And here we would say this function is decreasing at a decreasing rate because it's decreasing as it's going down. But uh, the amount that it decreases by gets smaller every time. So that's why we would say that this decreases at a decreasing rate. So as I go towards negative infinity on the x-axis, you can see the y increases outbound towards positive infinity. But if I go towards the right, we approach the horizontal asymptote at y is equal to negative 3. This function has e as the base, which is a very significant number if you're doing anything with uh, exponents, logarithms, or uh, financial uh, applications. Uh, e is commonly used in uh, compounding interest problems. But here, again, the transformed function has been given for you. Uh, so you can see that the negative in front of e gives us a vertical reflection. The x minus 1 says we're going to take everything and move everything to the right one space, and we're going to move everything up two spaces. So as I evaluate the, the transformed function, uh, as I go towards negative infinity, again, you can see that it approaches the horizontal asymptote of 2. And as I go to the right towards infinity, it goes down without bound towards negative infinity. And here's our last function that we see here, uh, where it says uh, the negative in front of the one half of the base is going to again give us a vertical reflection. The x plus 3 is going to be a horizontal shift three spaces to the left, and the plus 2 is going to move us two spaces up, giving us the transformed uh, function that you see in the graph that's provided. But as you go towards negative infinity, you can see that y is decreasing without bound towards negative infinity. And as you go to the right forever, y is approaching the horizontal asymptote at positive 2. Now, here are those same functions uh, without the graphs provided. And this is where we're going to start transitioning from maybe if you don't want to use the graph, this is where we're going to start that transition. Now I want to notice one thing here that was not in the previous equation is that inclusion of the c in front of the negative in front of the x minus h in parentheses. Uh, this is most commonly going to be negative, showing you that it is a horizontal reflection. So here we can just refer back to the functions themselves and start plugging this information here. If you refer back to this function, uh, it was a growth function. It did have uh, no reflections. And these were the limits that we had got as x went towards positive and negative infinity. And what we're using is we're going to just take this information and try and use it to make general uh, observations about the behaviors of exponential functions as they approach positive or negative infinity. And this is, oh, where's, there we go, there's my two. And so basically what you're seeing is that as we go from, uh, for any exponential function, we're either going to go towards a uh, positive infinity, a negative infinity, or we're going to approach a horizontal asymptote of some kind. So I'm going to go ahead and pause this video here, or stop this video here, and this will be the uh, conclusion of part one of limits of transcendental functions. If you have any questions about anything you've seen, please let me know. I'll be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Uh, but thank you for watching, and until next time, uh, take care.